developers are our community members, um, especially for DevNet, but also from Rocky. Um, it's super, super important to us that the things that we are building are created, those ideas come from either the, directly from the brains of the developer community that we talk to on a regular basis, um, or at least come through the themes and the trends that we see when we're looking at discussion forums and things of that nature. Yeah. So, you know, Albert, I, I really wanted to kind of talk with you about uh, coming from Rocky specifically, and, yeah. and as well as thinking about the experience a developer would have in working with Rocky products. To start with, in, and in your opinion, how how big of a role, and what role do they does it does the community play, or by that the developer community play, in contributing to the experience that is built for them on the product side? Yeah. So. In one word, massive, a massive <laughs> impact. To me, the value of a developer community is really around the definition of a true platform. And one of the definitions of a true platform that I find very appetizing from a developer community point of view is a place where value is being created, not just from Cisco and the customer, but between our partners, the tech partners building integrations and solutions or any ISVs or global system integrators building things and sharing them with customers. So when it's uh, second parties, customers sharing things with other customers or third party integrators building things and sharing things with those customers where Cisco is not even involved, we're just offering the platform. That is the hallmark, I think, of a, of a great developer community and also is the essence of a very strong platform. So for me, any way we can sort of get those that value exchange between second and third parties or customer to customer, that's that's where our, uh, you know I, I like to put our efforts. You know, I, I love hearing that for a number of reasons, and one of them happens to be, I had a conversation with somebody earlier today about this, yeah. the idea of, I, I do a talk sometimes called community versus community, and yeah. it's capital C community and lowercase c, capital C being sort of all the tools and the platforms and the processes, the things you just mentioned, yeah. all the things that uh, a community manager or a community team try to put in place as best they can right. to foster a sense of belonging and give developers or whoever your community members happen to be yeah. a place to go. But at the end of the day, you, it has to really be about those people. Yes. And lowercase c community, the definition of is a group of people who have a shared or common interest. That's yeah. it. So the platforms are just like the, the space. Um, how, as you, you know, we were talking recently about the general developer experience of you know, Meraki and from the DevNet side and as a community person and community person, we were just talking through how do you get that input, what does it look like, how are we evolving products. I guess I'm curious for you, um, in those conversations and when you're talking to community members, how do you find the best, some of the best ways to actually learn what they're looking for? I mean, it's one thing to get, not to kind of go too long, but it's one of those things that you can see on a site like, uh, make a wish or some, th those sorts of submit feedback buttons. And those are great. Yeah. But how do you find getting input from community members that can scale beyond just I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation? Like what do you find is some of the best ways to do that? Yeah, yeah. So I'm as a product manager myself, I mean, it's really, really important to have that virtuous loop of not just developers requesting things or wanting things, but reporting back to them on a regular basis and closing those loops. So we run uh, partner developer roundtables, and those are super useful for us to sort of talk about what's coming on the roadmap and evangelize, but also give them a chance to sort of talk about what's working, but also what's not, right? And a lot of the context around feature requests, it's much easier when it's a narrative and not just them throwing a, a ticket across the fence or creating a GitHub issue or pull request where a contest might get lost. So there's no substitute for, for user research and, and really talking to the community to learn about what their pain points are and what they're trying to solve for. Yeah, that makes total sense. Do you find um, most often that a lot of those conversation initiators are coming from uh, threads or things that you were seeing like in a support forum as an example or a, a discussion forum? Or do you find that there's others such as virtual events or other means by which you're you're kind of learning that, oh, there's a group of people here we should talk to or I saw this person messaged in this way. Uh, do you have like one or another that you kind of either tend to gravitate towards? You know, we're very fortunate in Meraki. We have a, a Meraki ecosystem BDM team. So if there are patterns and trends and things developers need, um, those get escalated to us from, from a human team at Meraki. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's it's probably a little bit more grassroots today than, than uh, I would prefer. I mean, it's really just scouring the community forums or being aware of uh, who's posting and asking for things on our, our GitHub pages. Um, 
and uh, but to, to, to what you're asking for, I think there we could probably use more discipline and structure. If there there was a way to uh, cover all those bases, I think um, we should definitely be open to them. You know, it's 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 interesting. We were talking about this the other day, and it's interesting yeah. you say it because even on the DevNet side, like we're we're in the same position. Like we, there's a lot of data sources right. from your Reddit's and Stack Overflows where people are having conversations that are related and sort of tangential sometimes, mm -hmm. and how do you kind of keep up with all of that, and like how do you know where to look and see those things? Yeah. Um, and I, I guess one of the interesting messages that you're, meant, you're bringing up um, is, and something I'd love to reinforce for anybody watching, is that submitting feedback, yes, can look like, you know, in Meraki, the Make-A-Wish, or on a Cisco site, maybe the submit feedback, they perform a similar function. That's really useful, being verbose, that's really useful, but I think it's also very, um, it, it's it's needed to say that any time that you are up a community member is talking about their experience with something good, bad, or indifferent online is useful for us as community managers to, to see. Yes. Because we 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 would prefer you do, we would love it if you and I should say prefer we'd love it if you would do it in the places that we built for you. Right. But if it's not there, just talk about it someplace. Don't just let it go into the ether because. Unless we can see it, we can't necessarily do anything. With yeah, it. yeah. And as we talk to developers, they're asking for more forums to discuss things. They want to exchange ideas um, with us, with other developers, with other customers. So um, the desire is there, and, and that's one of the most exciting things about working on a DevEx team at, at Cisco at Meraki. So um, you know, there there are organizations where developers are not clamoring for forums, right? So um, that would be the flip side of, the, of that spectrum. So we have something special here, and I think um, you know, the ball's in our court to, yeah. to lean in and offer them that, that, that avenue, the, the mediums and different channels to, to discuss. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Okay, I'm going to put you on the, before we wrap up, I'm going to put you on the spot. Sure. Totally going to put you on the spot. Yeah. Um, if you could pick sort of one experience or one story since you've been in this role, yeah. um, or since you've been around the Meraki ecosystem and developers and partners, if you could pick one story of like, hey, a thing happened that we learned about that we were able to take back, and it doesn't have to be something that turned into an actual roadmap item, but something where you heard something or you encountered a situation or saw yeah. like saw a message and you're like, oh, I didn't know that, we should really think about this. Yeah. Do you have one that kind of stands out for you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have one very clear example of on our community forum, there were customers talking about webhooks. Webhooks are a very efficient way for uh, Meraki customers to do monitoring use cases, right? Instead of pinging our API, calling for status of networks or devices, they can set up a webhook and we'll, we'll call you. We'll tell you when it's done. The only catch is the webhook only works if you have a template for the app that you want to listen in, right? So let's say you're, you want us to fire the webhook to Jira. Well, if there's no Jira template for webhooks, then it's not going to work. So in this case, a community member was asking for a Splunk template. And uh, we did not at that time have a Splunk template. And someone else on the forum responded and was like, oh, I actually made a Splunk template. Here, here's the JSON payload, right? So I thought that was like the most beautiful transaction, right? No money was exchanged. There was no leads. There was no sales pitch. It was just two people on a forum exchanging value. And that really gave me an idea of like, why are we not making this even easier as a first class uh, sort of experience in the developer portal where we can sort of crowdsource the ability to create webhook templates and we can have the community do QA for us and and that that's like a little little a bit of like you know you got to make sure the the quality is there um, but you can essentially have the the community create value for itself um, and so just that one little microtransaction, that one thread I thought was like a very beautiful situation. That is one of the coolest yeah. stories I've heard. I mean, there's, cool. there's, always, there's always those interesting ones that pop up here and there, but I think, yeah, I really enjoy that. And it's a, it's, I think it's one of the best examples specifically because, like you said, two people who connected were like, oh, I need help. I got you, yeah. I'll help you. Exactly. I love that. Like, yeah. that's, that is what you hope and dream for. Like, right. as community leaders, we're always, I mean, we're happy to jump in and be a, be a responder and right. try to engage, but what we really, you said it earlier, what we really want to build is a place yeah. that you can feel like you belong, that you and a bunch of other people are helping each other out, and it yeah. doesn't require us to have to jump in, and we're happy to do it, but yes. we're not the ones who are going to make the most value for you. Correct. It's other people there who've already had these learned experiences who you're probably going to attach yourself with more than you know, a community manager of some kind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. It was so good to have you here. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks awesome. For having me.